From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. This episode's brought to you by the audiobook The Last Observer – A Magic Battle for Reality by G. Michael Vasey, narrated by Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample on the audiobooks page at MarlarHouse.com or look for a link in this show's description. It just might be the worst first date in history. In Britain, a couple who met on Tinder they were on a first date when the woman reportedly went to use her date's bathroom, only to soon find herself in the middle of a terrifying nightmare. Her poop wouldn't flush. Her genius plan B was apparently to remove the poop, wrap it in toilet paper, and then toss it out the bathroom window, and she discovered the bathroom window was made up of two non-opening windows, and the poop got stuck between them. So she tried climbing head first from the top of the window so she could reach the bottom to retrieve her poop which, amazingly, she was able to do. But then she realized she was stuck, and ultimately she had to be rescued by firefighters who broke the window in order to uh, save her. Her date, Liam Smith, he, he actually took to GoFundMe to raise some of the funds needed for what he says is about $400 to replace the window. He, uh, by the way, a gentleman all the way through. He did not identify this woman. And on the GoFundMe, he has raised, uh, last I checked, $2,500. So he's got more than enough to pay for the window. And the extra is going to be split between a charity that brings toilets to, the, to a developing world, which is a pretty clever idea, and also the other half is going to go to a firefighter's charity. Now, for those who think this is a hoax, the Avon Fire and Rescue Service, they did confirm this story really did happen. Okay, well, here's my question, though. You meet a guy on Tinder, and for your very first date, you go to his house? Oh, yeah, sure, that's safe. California state lawmakers have approved designating a section of the 134 freeway as the President Barack H. Obama Highway in honor of our previous president, although it is a toll road and requires change. Adidas is introducing a line of beer and vomit repellent sneakers just in time for Oktoberfest. They also double as a female repellent. Excerpts from Hillary Clinton's upcoming book, What Happened?, shows that she blames her defeat, at least partly, on her rival, Senator Bernie Sanders. Meanwhile, Bernie has in turn blamed his defeat on Hillary, but he's not being a poor loser and writing a book about it. There is a new website called Verit.com for people who feel that Hillary Clinton should have won the presidency. It's already failing, and they're making a list of who to blame for it. Meanwhile, the publisher of a book by Hillary Clinton's longtime pastor is discontinuing sales of the book and destroying remaining copies, saying that it found examples of plagiarism. He had supposedly stolen some writing from another pastor. The moral high ground in this story is completely underwater. Dr. Ashley Weinberg, who is an occupational psychologist and author of Surviving the Workplace, says we ignore incoming phone calls that we sense will be long and involved and take some effort. But not answering a cell phone? That comes with a price. It breaks an unwritten psychological contract since we're not living up to our family and friends' expectations. Well, yeah, but isn't that why God created text messages and Facebook in the first place? A Belgian postman lightened his mailbag by failing to deliver thousands of letters and packages for five years. He kept the extra mail in his apartment. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night, but I'm just not feeling up to it today. In Detroit, a Jewish woman is suing Denny's after the chain served her bacon in an omelet that wasn't supposed to have any meat. Whatever happened to the days of people just giving others the benefit of the doubt? I mean, it was a mistake. Make me a new omelet. I mean, how hard would that be? And you know, if you don't want meat, lady, you do realize that if you let the eggs sit a while longer under the chicken that laid them, they become meat. A report says robots could wipe out another six million retail jobs in the next decade. The downside is that instead of the robots saying to customers, thank you, please come again, they keep saying, I'll be back. Madonna says she has moved to Portugal, bringing it to a grand total of one celebrity who has made good on their promise to leave the country if Trump was elected. Cher says she is not a fan of her own music. Hey, that makes it unanimous! 
British dentists are claiming that drinking Prosecco, a northern Italian wine, causes chronic tooth decay. This is shocking! Who knew Britain had dentists? Hindus, vegetarians, and vegans voiced outrage after Britain's new Polymer 5 note was found to contain animal fat. Now drug users are complaining the thicker and stronger plastic notes have left them with cut noses after trying to snort cocaine. And as you know, nose comfort is the top item on the list when a government redesigns dollar bills. Over half the people of the UK say they don't belong to any organized religion. Personally, I don't believe in organized religion either, so I joined a disorganized religion. Last Sunday, the preacher overslept and arrived 30 minutes late with no sermon, and then the ladies' auxiliary lost the names of people volunteering for next week's bake sale. A study of mainly British and North American rock artists has found that they are two to three times more likely to suffer a premature death than members of the general population. The lead author of the study says the paper clearly describes a population of rock and pop stars who are at a disproportionate risk of alcohol and drug-related deaths. This study brought to you by the Center for Studying the Obvious. Amazon has launched Brown Sugar, a new subscription video-on-demand service featuring what it calls the biggest collection of the baddest African-American movies for its Prime members. Among the titles they're offering, Blackula, Black Caesar, Cotton Comes to Harlem, and Foxy Brown. Okay, am I the only one who thinks this is racist? I mean, if, if we created a new service called Cracker that featured only movies starring white people, what kind of an uprising would there be? If you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and other social media to help get the word out. To become an official weirdo, click that subscribe button and click that little bell next to the subscribe button to be a part of the notification squad. And while you're at it, click that like button to let the world know that you are an official weirdo.